Hey everyone, welcome to this psychology lecture series. In this video, we are going to talk about power analysis and effect size. Power analysis can be used to calculate the minimum sample size required so that one can be reasonably likely to detect an effect of a given size. For example, how many times do I need to toss a coin to conclude it is rigged by a certain amount? Power analysis can also be used to calculate the minimum effect size that is likely to be detected in a study using a given sample size. Power is used to make comparisons between different statistical test procedures. For example, between a parametric test and a non-parametric test of the same hypothesis. There are four parameters involved in a power analysis. The first one is alpha, which is usually set at 0 0.05, which has the probability of finding significance where there is none. Alpha is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis even though it is true, that is a false positive. Alpha is a probability of a type 1 error. The next one is power, which is usually set to 0 0.80, which has the probability of finding true significance. Power is the probability of accepting the null hypothesis even though it is false, that is a false negative. Power equal to 1 minus beta, where beta is the probability of not finding significance when it is there, that is a false negative, and this is a probability of a type 2 error. The next one is n, which is the sample size, which is usually the parameter you are solving for, and the last one is effect size. Effect size is a quantitative measure of the magnitude of the experimenter effect. The larger the effect size, the stronger the relationship between two variables. You can look at the effect size when comparing any two groups to see how substantially different they are. Typically, research studies will comprise an experimental group and a control group. The experimental group may be an intervention or treatment which is expected to affect a specific outcome. For example, we might want to know the effect of a therapy on treating depression. The effect size value will show us if the therapy has had a small, medium or large effect on depression. Effect sizes either measure the sizes of associations between variables or the sizes of differences between group means. There are four types of power analysis. Power analysis can either be done before collecting data and after the data are collected. A priori or prospective power analysis can be done before the data are collected. It is typically used in estimating sufficient sample sizes to achieve adequate power. Post hoc or retrospective power analysis is conducted after a study has been completed and uses the obtained sample size and effect size to determine what the power was in the study, assuming the effect size in the sample is equal to the effect size in the population. Next is the criterion power analysis, which is rarely used by researchers. And the last is the sensitive power analysis, which is used when the sample size is predetermined by study constraints. For example, if there are 20 subjects available, determining how many you need is less relevant. Instead, one determines what level of effect you could find with the subjects you have. This is referred to as the minimal detectable effect. The steps involved in conducting a power analysis are First, we have to select the type of power analysis that is required. Next, we have to select the expected study design that reflects your hypothesis of interest, that is t-test, ANOVA or something else. Next, we have to select a power analysis tool that supports your design. And next, we have to provide three of the four parameters, usually alpha, power 
and expected size and solve the remaining parameter that is usually the sample size. I hope you like this video. Please share these videos with everyone who are preparing for this exam and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.